I was looking here in the chat, and Mark asked this this great question, and it is, "What do you think of the Yesu FTX One F?" Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I don't have a dog in this fight. I haven't had a chance to look at this, but Michael has looked at every five pictures that have been released of it. Every five. There is nothing else out there about it. So I Michael, studied. Why don't, you, why don't you tell me? I studied okay. it intently to try to figure this pictures. thing out. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull it up here because um, this is the new wonder rig from yesu and uh that is the uh they announced it oh about almost two weeks ago i i guess the yesu ftx 1f hf 50 144 430 me megahertz all mode qrp portable transceiver reserve now at dx engineering so yeah <laughs> this looks, thing they made looks flashy it does it's um, they made it, they uh, made the big announcement at uh, in Japan at their uh, Tokyo Ham Fest. I, I forget what it's called, but it was in, it it was the yeah the Tokyo uh, Ham Fest, and um, there was a couple of pictures leaked. You know, it was sitting behind the glass case, and it definitely looks small. I'd say, you know, it's 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 hard to kind of judge the size of the things, but probably very similar in size to what you'd see um, the ICOM IC705. And it's definitely, if you read the specs, it's definitely something that's head to head uh, with the IC705. So you know what they've, you know, what Yesu has kind of got targeted in their sites. Now, is uh, this, is that as deep as the 817, 818? Or no, is that a real short one like the 705? It's really short. It's not very okay. deep at all. I, 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 I found online a couple of pictures that showed the backside and yeah. um, it's, you know, it's all, it's all like faceplate and then maybe about two inches back, you know. So it, kind it of like a chonky head unit if you have like an FTM 400. I would call it, I absolutely would call it a chonky head unit. Or like the yeah. FTM 300, a little bit smaller, not as quite as tall. Um, um, it's got a 4.3 in diagonal uh, inch diagonal screen, okay. um, which is I think is the same size as the FTM 500. Don't quote okay. me on that. Okay. Um, probably the same screen. It's probably, probably the probably same. Yeah, yeah uh, LED TFT style screen. You know, it's got that big spinner wheel and all that other garbage, um, which didn't, to me, never made sense on the VHF UHF units, but um, looks perfect on on this thing right here. Um, now, it it's since it's all band all mode, it it, it can do simultaneous receive on HF and VHF, HF and UHF, VHF, VHF, UHF, UHF, VHF, VHF blah, 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 blah. Um, it's got built-in C4 FM fusion control in it. Um, it's, uh, of course, all SDR, um, the three-dimensional spectrum screen. You see that on the display there. It's got two speakers, so it's got that, uh, if you look at the bottom, it's it's got that, you know, like, like the, the other rigs do. Uh, the, the VHF, UHF ones do, you know, it's got that front facing speaker that's kind of shoots the sound at you. So oh, kind of like the Bose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like a wave radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the baffles and everything, right? Because <laughs> that 2.3 KC of audio, that really yeah. needs all the help it could get. Uh, X, they say effective QRM rejection. You know, it's got all that. It's got all the Yesu gizmos on it, and um, everything. Everything beyond that is speculation. Now, the things that really concern me on this rig, um, and I'll just, well, we can leave the picture up for a second. The things that really concern me on this rig is it comes with a um, fifty-six seventy milliamp hour battery. Now, 5,670 milliamp hour battery, which, if you think about it, that is quite a large battery for, you know, a capacity for something something like that. 
And that tells me right away that this thing is going to be a power hog. And of course, if you see that, you know, if, if you look at that screen there, that screen is going to take a lot of energy, a uh, full color, uh, 4.3 inch TFT screen. So, and all the processing and all of the processing power. for all of that, all of that DSP control and the whole nine yards, yeah. you know, it's, it's 24 bit analog or analog digital. Yeah. It's going to be, it's yeah. going to take some, it's going to take some wattage. It will. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we could, it's, I, I'm, I'd be a little, I'd be a little concerned about that now. So big battery means big power consumption means big heat. And um, what is so, and Yase is acknowledging that because right away in their, in their announcement, they said that if you run, a, if you want to run FT8 with this radio, you're going to need their optional external cooling fan that clips onto the back of the unit. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you got to make a couple extra bucks there, Yase. Yeah. So. You know, right away when they say, you know, option, you know, external, external cooling fan. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. Now we know that this thing is going to be a heat producer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Dave, it, says it, Dave White says it right. I can't wait to see how deep the menus are on that one. That's <laughs> absolutely right. But it's all touchscreen. It's all touchscreen. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, you yeah, know, the one thing that I, I, think they'll be good about this is the guys who run transverters especially our mm -hmm. microwave friends i think yep. they're gonna find that because i think the 705 and its form factor isn't great for the guys who run microwave i've seen some yeah. guys that run it they've come up with some pretty unique solutions i think this might be a game changer for them but that's a small market Especially now that ICOM is trying to come out with like a five gig, ten gig uh, microwave setup. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, the QRP guys. Now this is going to have great receive. I mean, don't oh absolutely. Get me wrong, oh absolutely. The FTDX one hundred and one, the FT seven hundred and ten, anything that I, or that Yasu has come out with recently has had some of the best receive of any radio ever commercially built for the amateur mm -hmm. you they're way up there way oh, yeah. way way up there right up with Elecraft and some other stuff uh yep. flex radio is having a hard time competing with the ears on these things oh yeah great. no it's great but what's that do for qrp not much because qrp ain't about receiving yeah. it's about transmitting um yep. so hopefully they got put a little bit of time and effort but processor wise into uh, audio processing and of course all these QRP antennas everything but yeah, again, that's yeah. going to be a battery hog um, oh, so yeah. don't, now <clears throat> let's remember the 817 the original 817 mm -hmm. jog your memory what was the problem with the original 817 oh well batteries. Other than batteries battery drain battery drain because remember anything with a any switch that is a transistor will always have some sort of parasitic drain yep mm -hmm. okay and that was a problem is that they had a it was parasitic drain on the power switch because it was a transistor it wasn't an yep. actual snap switch no and it was a, it's a soft is, touch switch yeah yep and if you left that the battery in the 817 what would happen was it would actually get to the point where the battery was so low you would still have that drain and you blow the finals on the radio yeah oh yeah without even, without even it was just sitting in a bag you'd toast the radio um so with that i hope that they learned their lesson um well, but again this, with it i just i'm not yeah. a big fan of the radio the 897 had that too they had the, the battery packs that you can put in there, and they weren't that great. So what makes me think that the extra money that you're paying for this battery is going to be that great, especially when you can get a LifePo 4 battery for stupid money nowadays, and you're going to run a lot longer. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I mean, we're, we're spitballing here. We don't have our hands <laughs> on this radio. We haven't seen specs no. or anything, but just what we've yeah. seen, 
Um, Everything is speculation. Yeah. 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 So again, let, let's let's see what happens and what I mean. I, like I said, it's going to have great ears. If it's mm-hmm. the same architecture as FTDX one hundred and one and the seven hundred and ten, it's going to have great ears regardless. Yeah. Um, and yep. that is worth its weight in gold. But let's see some of the other nuances and see what they yeah. do. Yeah. Because this is a yeah. whole new kid. This is not F seventeen eight one seven to an eight one eight because that was the same yep. damn radio. I don't care yep. what they said. Yeah. It was yeah. original yeah. word. Um, but this is all speculation. This is a whole new paradigm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, Todd says, I wonder why they limit power to 5 watts with the internal battery. If you want, this will, this radio will do a full 10 watts if you have, if you connect external power. But, um, you know, it's, I, I think it's, I don't, you know, with the, with the, uh, the internal battery or the clip-on battery, I don't think it just has the capacity to do 10 watts because it's got all that other overhead on top of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, I, uh, I, and 5 watts to 10 watts, there ain't much of a difference. Not a whole lot. I mean, 10, 10 watts is still really QRP, especially if you're running side Yeah, band. Yep, 10 watts uh, QRP. Yeah. You know, it's... I, I, I think it's, you know, really... I, I it, I'm, I'm almost tempted to put some money down to get my name on the list and um <laughs> yeah it's gonna be i mean and the other thing too is that so at the price of what this thing is gonna go for mm-hmm. for a 10 watt radio hey, could you just spend that money and get a 991 or a 710 well look at it this way i mean an icon ic705 is what 1400 dollars. yeah what's what's so an fd710 yeah a 710 is about a thousand okay and uh, seven ten's got a great receive on it. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred, yeah. Yeah. Eleven hundred dollars. Right. So are you gonna pay more for a radio that puts out less? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if I was gonna spend fourteen hundred on a seven oh five, I might be just as tempted to spend sixteen hundred on an Elecraft. Yeah. Right. And an Elecraft is a Cadillac. Yeah. Right, I mean, I mean, these are good radios, but you know, we're talking aircrafts like a Rolls Royce coming in. Yeah, you know, silver Phantom right here. Any and day of the week. Oh yeah, and they've and they've got power figured out on that rig. You know. Yeah. That's it, yeah, it's, just, it's just. Yeah, the aircrafts yeah. they don't screw around with power. Um, no. They no. put the power where it needs to go. Um, don't get me wrong. The display. I mean, if you want a pan adapter for your aircraft, you can get a pan adapter. Mm-hmm. Right, doesn't need to be three D because you know three D nope. is fancy, right? But that doesn't that doesn't help you make that many more contacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, that's that's my thought. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll put the money down. We'll see. I don't know. You know, it's get on the list and then I could decide for, if it comes out. Or you, know. you get twenty watts and you get a G ninety, <laughs> and you still have heat problems. <laughs> <laughs> KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.